Thanks, everybody. We're really excited to uh, continue the discussion here on uh, how we unlock the potential of uh, capturing data and turning it into, uh, into value. So really excited about this. Um, first, uh, a couple of comments uh, um, based on the first uh, panel here before we, we start chatting. Um, farmers, in my mind, in my experience, really want and need innovation. Uh, you know, agriculture is a tough competitive global marketplace and farmers need lots of support. So we'll try to uh, uh, bring that out in the discussion here when we're chatting with, uh, with Rob a little bit earlier. Um, I go back a few years uh, when I used to chat with my grandfather and my father. And in the 30s, they were using horses. Um, I didn't experience that. Uh, but then, you know, 22, 23 years ago, you know, the internet was just emerging. And so, you know, you can see the progression. And I think now we've got a wonderful foundation with all these technologies to uh, enable farmers and agribusiness to, you know, improve things, be more productive, more profitable. So I'm really excited about this panel today. And, you know, it's, it's kind of interesting too, just seeing some of the uh, people in the chat. We have people from Mexico and I think, uh, you know, really around the world. And so, uh, Pretty amazing to be calling, uh, you know, our friend, uh, our friend Rob from uh, Saskatchewan to chat a little bit uh, about his farm. So, uh, thanks, City Age and the sponsors for uh, for this panel, and uh, you know, we could continue the discussion on digitization. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce Rob, and uh, Rob, can you tell us a little bit about your farming operation? Sure. Uh, so we farm in Davidson, Central Saskatchewan. Uh, it's a family farm, as mentioned earlier, oil seeds, pulses, and rotation with some cereals, minimize disease, maximize economic benefit uh, sort of thing. Uh, minimum tillage, zero tillage, those sorts of things that were developed in the 80s and 90s uh, in response to uh, the needs of soil erosion and all of the uh, practical needs of trying to uh, preserve our best resource that's underneath our feet that provides a living for us all. Um, we've, we've been a farm here since 1904, so we've seen all the all of the changes that you talked about, of course, I wasn't here for a lot of them, uh, but uh, certainly familiar with our legacy of, uh, of basically continuing to innovate. Um, that's, uh, you know, we've, we've gone from, from the horses, like you said, to uh, variable rate, sectional control, zero tillage, all of these different things that uh, involves technology uh, and uh, always kind of pushing some boundaries on the, uh, on the things that uh, the industry needs to provide for us. Oh, that's great. What, uh, you know, if you look forward, um, what are some of those technology barriers or just, just general barriers and challenges uh, before you start adopting, uh, you know, new, uh, new things that you're starting to hear about down the road? Well, I think it's uh, the, the legacy of having poor data connectivity in, uh, in rural areas has been an ongoing concern with a lot of these, uh, a lot of these things. It's getting better. Uh, cellular data is getting better. You know, I think there was a question about uh, on the on the Q and A about uh, the uh, Starlink service, which I've got mine ordered. It's it's not here, and we've got decent access. I, my picture is actually coming through, and I'm using the internet, so that's good. Um, but I think that you know, on the adoption curve and stuff like that, is just that we have a history of uh, data and connection and all of these different apps that uh, that Ryan and, and Shane were talking about earlier. That uh, we're just not familiar with them. And we've really seen little value to adapting to a lot of these things beyond the Excel spreadsheet, which I'm still quite familiar and happy using. So that's some of the, some of those things that makes sense. No, that, that makes a lot of sense. Um, you know, I just want to dive into a point you just made about seeing value. Uh, what advice, and we'll dig into this a little bit later on with the rest of the panel, but what advice can you provide uh, technology providers, uh, your suppliers, um, on how how they can help farmers, how they can bring some of these new innovations and and uh, you know help you on your farm. Yeah, I think the, the a lot of the things that I see right now is we're we're doing it because we can. You know, there's a lot of really cool stuff out there, and uh, it it needs to get above the. The fifty-first uh, thing that we want to do on our on our list of things. Mm -hmm. So, um, uh, sorry. Um, so how how do we how do we get the uh, 
don't know, how do we, how do we get us involved? Um, the desire to use it and, and financial benefit, I guess, is, is what really it comes down to, right? Mm -hmm. If, if it's neat and cool and organized and everything else, and it's got bells and whistles, it works for a while, but then you kind of drift from it. But if there's a, a clear financial benefit to us um, participating in this and learning things that we're not comfortable with, I might add, I, I don't like data. I don't like the tech stuff. I like farming. I really mm -hmm. passionate about growing things and, and making all of those decisions and using data to make those decisions is important. And I, I rely on it, but to have the, the newest iPhone and the neatest widget, I'm not, uh, it creates more pain than it's worth. So that's kind of my, my honest view of, of, of those sorts of things. But, but because there's so much available and there's so much potential to that, because we're getting into traceability, we're getting into this carbon market. And the bottom line is, is that we own, uh, we own the data, we create the data. So all of these apps that plug into it should enable us to be able to uh, leverage that, if, mm -hmm. if that's uh, a good overview on that. No, I, I think, uh, you know, when I chat with farmers, uh, same thing, they don't want to know how the watch works. They just want to know what time it is and save me yeah. time, save me money, you know, make me money, help me stay in business. Uh, those are, you know, because you've got, a, as you say, 51 things on your, on your plate and, uh, and uh, no, that's wonderful. No, thanks for, thanks for joining us. Thanks for sharing so honestly. And, uh, you know, we'll get back to you in a minute. I just want to engage the rest of our panel before we uh, before we go too much further um thanks Joe. yeah thanks laura lee would you kind of introduce yourself a little bit and tell us about combine um and talk to talk to what you're trying to bring to the marketplace with combine that that will benefit farmers yeah sure thing so hi everyone great to be here today i think we got a, a interesting start so far um, so I'm director of business development and partnerships at Combine Ag. Um, as mentioned earlier, I'm originally from Ohio. I hold a degree in ag engineering from, from the Ohio State University, I have to say. Uh, previously worked for a crop inputs company called KWS. So was a part of a corporate innovation team there that was focused on uh, partnerships with early stage ag tech companies. So partnerships with, with ag tech is kind of what I've, I've lived and breathed for the last few years. And, and that's primarily what I focus on at, at Combine. So to, to back up a bit, Combine, we are an early stage software company. Uh, we make tools for farmers. So we have what we call a crop marketing hub, which is basically a software tool that enables a farmer to keep track of their important trade information. So things like their, uh, their contracts, their, uh, their crop inventory, um, offers, marketed position, that type of thing. And then we're also largely focused on uh, decision support. So I'm, I'm glad that Rod mentioned that earlier because in addition to just record keeping around that important trade data, we're really focused on um, taking that and enabling farmers to make more informed and timely grain marketing decisions. So that's really the value that, that we're trying to push for. Um, if, if we look at the grain industry today, um, there's a level of sophistication that grain buyers have, right? They have a lot of really interesting products and tools that they can do or use and do um, to do really complicated things in, in grain, like hedging and just really optimize their origination. We want to bring that value to the farmer level. So we want to empower farmers to have that level of sophistication and have those tools that help them just become better at marketing their grain. Um, so that's what that's what we do, and I am looking forward to today's today's chat. Oh, that's wonderful. Yeah, I think we've all seen you know tremendous swings in commodity prices. So uh, um, I know most farmers uh, are always kicking themselves because they always want to hit the highs, and and uh, seldom do. At least at least in my my uh, humble opinion, I never hit the highs very often. Um, you know, that's great. Uh, I'm going to move on to Daniel. Thanks. Uh, Thank you very much, uh, Laura. Uh, Daniel St. George is with IBM, uh, and everybody knows IBM, great global leading technology company. Daniel, can you share a, a little bit of your experience uh, working in the agri-food industry and um, look forward a little bit in agriculture and how, how uh, farmers and agribusiness can benefit from you know, some of these new technology innovations coming down the pipeline? Well, thanks, Joe. Uh, great to great to be here too. 
thank you to City Age, everyone, the panelists and the people who have joined um, this great event. Thanks to uh, to Rob for your um, your honest assessment of where you're at. Um, and I think there's a lot of us uh, that can can look at uh, your experience and other people's experience to get a, a grip on where we're at right now in terms of uh, the industry and our maturity, uh, frankly, in this space. So, so, so you know, IBM is, uh, as you said, 100 plus old company. We work in the, in the we, we call ourselves a cloud and an AI or cognitive company. Um, we have solutions and, and services uh, in the agri-food, uh, agribusiness space from um, our blockchain work, uh, addressing sustainability, food waste, food traceability, to our in, uh, environmental intelligence suite, looking at uh, sustainability and, and weather powering analytics. But I think, and I think an important aspect of all of this is, um, really was brought up by, by um, Ryan and, and, and Shane in the previous area, is how do we address these these big challenges that we're facing now, like Rob's facing around things like um, fragmentation of, of technology, interoperability or the lack of interoperability between solutions. Um, user experience, I think is a big one. We often forget that, you know, um, a, lot of the, a lot of the barriers to uptake of this stuff is, is, is a poor user experience. And if it's not part of that top 50, um, you know, solving some of those problems, uh, then then it just doesn't make the it doesn't deliver the value needed. So I think um, you know understanding uh, how to solve those problems and and where we think I think is important where we're seeing the industry going and and I like to to talk a lot about other industries too. And as much as we talk about ag being quite nuanced and different, there are similarities to other industries. I've worked in areas like healthcare, and I think. Um, there's a lot of similarities between the maturity that healthcare um, went through in terms of fragmentation, interoperability, still nowhere near there, but it's it's probably a little ahead of agriculture and looking across at how they solve those problems. We believe this concept of ecosystems or partnerships, open platforms is uh, a concept that is important to solve some of these things. So you're starting to see some of that in the industry at the moment with partnerships, um, et cetera. But I think that's an area that is uh, certainly interesting, interesting and, and uh, uh, something that IBM is playing a large part in helping uh, partners across the, the food value chain to uh, solve some of these problems too. Fabulous. Look forward to uh, chatting with you a little bit later too. Uh, Bethany, welcome. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, uh, for the people that aren't familiar with Soma Detect, uh, explain what you do and what you're, uh, the market you're addressing. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so my name is Bethany, CEO of Soma Detect. I am a biologist by training who somewhat fell into the agricultural industry. And so when we started, it was, um, I had so much to learn, which uh, was really only achieved by knocking on barn doors and working very directly right on the ground with um, farmers that were, that, well, that obviously had years and years and generations and generations more experience than, than I ever could. And so um, the company is, we're a startup company that does uh, inline milk quality testing for dairy farmers. So we don't work on crops. We work um, really in the livestock space and um, in dairy and which is just, it really is a wonderful place to be. And so, um, yeah, our technology is all about uh, you know, getting as much data from the milk quality uh, factors, health factors, different things like that, and then giving farmers information so that they can make uh, quick management decisions as they go through their day. Terrific. Now the challenging part, gang. We've got three major topics we wanted to address really quickly. Five minutes per topic. Um, I, want you, I want you all just, you know, sharing some quick thoughts so we can have these discussions with uh, with uh, you know, for our audience here. So the first one, um, you know, what are the barriers, challenges, issues in digitization that you see? Uh, you know, Laura, let's start off with you. Yeah, yeah, that's a, a big question. Um, so, so Combine was actually started by uh, two guys who come from farming families. 
So we originally set out to solve, you know, pain points that they themselves and their families have experienced when it comes to marketing their grain. Um, so a, a big obstacle that, that we've faced or that we've seen from the, those experiences, just a general lack of farmers being able to access their own data. And I don't know if this is something that's unique to grain marketing. I've, I've not seen this really replicated in other areas of ag, but if you take, for example, when you know, a farmer sells their grain to a, to a buyer, that record of sale, you know, the contract, it's actually in the buyer system. And it's in fact, very difficult for a farmer to just directly access that themselves. They can access it through you know, uh, the buyer system, um, but in the case of you know, when the buyer system goes down, and we talked a little bit about this with, with uh, Rob earlier, they can be in a bit of a pickle. So uh, we've, we've tried to solve that through um, integrations. Uh, I mentioned earlier that partnerships is a big piece of what I focus on. I think generally the theme today is you know, data interoperability. So we've tried or we've built Combine out with the goal in mind of, of making it um, purposefully connected to tools on both the farmer and the buyer sides. So we can you know, help a farmer get access to that information that might be you know, behind a walled garden in their buy system um, and help them actually access that, that information when it's across multiple buyer systems as well. So that's um, one big barrier we've seen is just general accessibility to data and particularly accessibility from the, from the angle of it's in you know, someone else's tool. Perfect. Daniel, let her rip. Yeah, listen, I, I've, got to, I've got to agree, but you know, a slightly different take is I don't think it's necessarily the responsibility of the farmer or the grower. We talk about data, owning their data, access to data. I think there's a responsibility on the industry to demonstrate value first and foremost. And, um, and even if we talk about the top 50 things a farmer has to do, how can we make that more efficient and effective? And, and, um, and I think it's up to the industry to be able to do that and demonstrate that value. People like uh, ag retailers are important crop input companies, a collection of those things to be able to um, make it easier and, and more enjoyable, frankly, uh, in, a, in an experienced way for, for growers to do that. And um, ease of use. And I haven't got yeah, ease of use. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. and, and it's not necessarily data. I think it's information and yeah. knowledge. It's, mm -hmm. it's not seen that, that these, that, you know, farmers aren't necessarily data scientists or, or people that can, you know, they might be able to do a couple of graphs and, and spreadsheets, but mm -hmm. it's up to the, the uh, industry and players in the industry to be able to provide that information and or knowledge uh, to inform uh, growers, um, you know, what, what to do. Perfect. Bethany? Yeah, I mean, so I have so much to say about that. I love um, Daniel ending that on the sort of you know, information, knowledge, um, that, that scale. And I think we hear that again and again in, in the data space. And certainly it's very common in, in AI and machine learning to talk about, you know, data, information, knowledge, and then wisdom as, mm -hmm. as the fourth one. And farmers are like very, very rich. There's a ton of data on a farm. There's lots of wisdom. And, um, you know, it's like filling in those other, those other things and helping to process that data to actually create information and knowledge that's really key. Um, we, we definitely, I mean, we're an IoT device on farm. And so certainly, you know, Laura spoke about connectivity as a barrier. I, I love the audience question that came in as uh, making reference to Starlink. We actually work with um, a farm that has the Starlink system in, you know, has actually relatively good internet, but then has Starlink as a backup. And I think that that helps to make their internet connectivity so much more robust than it was ever was before. And I'm really excited to see things like that um, go forward. I, I also think for lots of early stage companies, your, so much of it is about working with the farmers, working with the customers, and then iterating as quickly as possible to maximize the value that you're providing. And, and that's hard in a lot of industries. I think in, in agriculture, it just, you know, you have no choice but to get in the car and like make that trek to wherever you're going and, and all those things. And um, I think if you're going to work in this space and not enjoy those things, you're going to have a really tough time and a lot of grueling days. And so, um, yeah, that's sort of how our approach is, is being as close as possible to the folks that we do work with. Good advice. 
Rob, tie it all together for us. What? Uh, hey, thanks. What, is it? <laughs> what are all the issues? What are what are a few big things that uh, if you could wave the magic wand and and fix them uh, the next six to twelve months? What would you fix? Oh boy, yeah. Well, that's a pretty open question, isn't it? Um, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the things I see is that we're for how much digitized everything we, we have, I've got paper all over my desk and mm -hmm. I like paper. I like the, the security of having something in your hand. And I would suggest that there's a lot of people that, uh, that have that same sentiment that they're just not ready to let go of whether it's contracting. There you go. Right. You know, I've, all my notes are on my, on my papers. They're not on my iPhone or in my notes. Um, so, and I, I like to think that I'm somewhat progressive. So um, there's, there's a whole large percentage of people that are, haven't got to where I am yet with, with using some of these tools. So that leads into familiarity, what we're familiar with, how we do business, um, how we do grain contracting, like, uh, like we talked about before, there was quite a, quite a little trust issue with, with all of the system changes and those things. So uh, privacy, uh, if I've got a file locked in my file folder, if somebody steals it, I know that it's gone. But if it's still there, then unless there's some spy camera stuff, you know, but, and that's that whole thing is understanding the system. And we need to see value when we're digitizing all of this stuff. If it saves me time, if it makes it easier to access my records, or if I can increase my production per UTIL or whatever economic term, then, then there's value. But if it's just to do it for the sake of somebody said it would be easier, you, you just, it just stays on the self, shelf. And the amalgamation of companies, the, the, the good idea that starts with an app and it rolls up to a, a larger and larger and larger company and just understanding where all of your stuff is going when you're, when you're creating it, storing it, putting it in this cloud that we all talk about. Um, it's really always comes back to just understanding how this system works and how, how far we've got to go to understanding it's because if I can't understand it or if somebody else can't understand it, there's a very low likelihood that I want to be involved in it. Yeah. Great point. Um, my brother is a partner in a large farming operation and I'll, I'll tell him about all these new technologies. And, you know, usually he just rolls his eyes and uh, says, all right, I, I'm really busy and I don't have an IT department. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so yeah. if it doesn't work on my phone, um, make it easy for me. So saving them time uh, to help them make money, I think is a critical, critical point here. Um, want to spend a, a couple of minutes, we can't spend very much time on it, but privacy of data, ownership of data, liability issues. Uh, Daniel, can you hit hit this topic for a little bit? Uh, what should we be thinking about in the supply chain, both as farmers and agribusiness? Yeah, this is a interesting topic. I, you know, I debate this topic quite a bit with, with people in the industry. Um, I, you know, I relate a lot of it to, to data that we, we share in other, in other industries as well, such as healthcare or financial data. <clears throat> I think it's a, a little bit of a, I think it's, it's important. And it's, I think the important bit to understand is, I don't, I don't want to speak on behalf of growers necessarily, but I think um, anytime we share data, really what we're trying to get back is is what value is that going to have to both my operation me personally my business and even the industry as a whole and i think if you can connect those dots and people better understand how the data is being used and what it's being used for and the value that's generated i think people are going to be more willing to to you know share that data um, if they if they're not already it's it's similar to to the finance industry or or even even healthcare in a little bit of a way, but um, yeah, it's it's an interesting topic. Yeah, no, it's great. Um, what do I have next year? Bethany, what do you think on the whole privacy and data? Because you're generating a lot of data from dairy farmers. We are. We're generating a lot of data. We're also using their existing data sets to provide context to the data that we create, um, and we spend a lot of time thinking about how to what you know what are the rules around the data how do we share that data effectively because the reality too that we run in what um the way they said in dairy they they don't want to look at another screen but i i you know the dairy industry they have their herd management so, you know people don't want more software 
they want greater functionality and greater value out of the things that they are doing and the things that they are using. And so how do we get our data back into these systems um, in a meaningful way while still protecting, you know, our part, the part of our business and, and those kinds of things too. And so I think I, I, when I started, I used to think these were like really easy questions to like, oh, well, other industries have figured this out. And how is it that this is still such a big conversation? And I um, have just come to appreciate, you know, it is, it is a big conversation and every single farm is its own business. And they all have, you know, every farmer that we work with has different understanding expectations um, in terms of what happens with their data and where it goes and, and all these things. And in the value piece, you know, there's this, nobody loves the feeling that something they create is being used to make someone else a ton of money without them getting anything back for that. And, and of course they wouldn't, right? And so how do we acknowledge that effectively? How do we quantify that in a meaningful way too? Because, um, you know, and, and how do we maximize the benefits to the farm, uh, you know, who's actually contributing their data? So these are, none of them are simple questions. Uh, and then, and then all this ultimately ends up, you know, we, we find, we read through a lot of, not me personally, but, but folks in, in the business will read through data agreements and all these different things. And for anyone in the room who's done, I'm sure many of us have, have tried to work our way through some of these, like they're, these are complicated documents. They're, um, really difficult to wrap your head around. And sometimes they're intentionally ambiguous because it's safer to be ambiguous than to really take a stance here. And so it's a, it's a conversation in flux. I think um, we've taken the approach, given the type of data that we generate, and it's a rather unique data set, we sort of take the approach that the more folks that use our data, the better off or the greater the benefit for our company um, as a whole. So whether that's the farm, uh, the vet, the nutritionist, the, you know, industry around, um, the more people we have looking at using parsing that data and bringing it from raw numbers to the information and knowledge that we're talking about, the better it is for our farmers and ultimately the best it is for our business and what we're trying to achieve. Rob, uh, how do you think about, you know, your farm's data and who do you share it with, uh, and, and why, um, we only have a minute if uh, you can. Yeah, sure. Okay, so yeah, I've <laughs> got it fragments. Into a bottle. <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll compress it. I've, I've got fragments of data everywhere for probably the last 10 years off of our yield monitors and every little thing that you signed up with said share with us or whatever else. So we've got stuff all over the place right now. And we certainly want to clean that up uh, in, in the future, knowing, knowing where it goes. Because like was suggested, we don't like the idea of somebody making a bundle of money off of us. We want to be partners in this. And we want to know that our data is, is meaningful and in, in being used well. And as we go forward into all of the, the, the carbon and all of these sorts of things and the liability for your activities and those sorts of things, this stuff's, it's really important knowing who's got access to know what you're doing. That's terrific. Um, we're down to one minute here. Laura, can you um, just let people know how they can get a hold of you if they want to follow up with you and Combine? And we'll just go around around the table here and make sure you know, we run out of time today, but I uh, want to make sure people engage if they're interested in more information. Yeah, absolutely. Um, the one quick thing I'd add on, on the last data topic is Combine is ADT certified. So Ag Data Transparent, that's been an uh, uh, important focus for us as an early stage company. Basically, that's just us agreeing to abide by a set of core principles that ADT sets out around fair usage of farmer data. Uh, so it helps us be a, a bit more transparent about what we're doing with, with pharma data by, by following that certification. Um, you can reach me at l.lee at combine.ag, also active on LinkedIn. Um, always happy to talk through, you know, ways that we could better connect combine to tools on both the farmer and the buyer sides. If that sounds like something that you want to get into a conversation about, um, let me know. Always happy to chat. Bethany, how can they uh, hunt you down? Great. I can be found on LinkedIn or um, via our website, somadetect.com. Terrific. Daniel? LinkedIn, pull the way. And Rob, uh, hopefully we won't pester you too much with your busy schedule, but if they want uh, some farmer feedback, how uh, I know I follow you on Twitter and I'm a big fan of yours. So, Well, gee, shucks. Yeah, you can find me on Twitter, RGStone1. Uh, you can find me on LinkedIn. Or uh, if you happen to be in central Saskatchewan, stop by the farm for a tour and we'd uh, love to buy you a beverage. We're, we're on our way.
we're on our way. <laughs> Thanks, uh, and Zara, we'll pass it back to you on time. And uh, thank you so much, panel, for sharing. Um, you know, if you're interested, reach out to the panel if you have other questions, and and uh, we'll pass it back to the the host.